another day on the Canal DMD. And today is exciting because today we are reaching the summit of the entire canal system that we're going to be on. All right. How many miles have we been on this canal for now? Nick reckons about 100 nautical miles. This is where I get my exercise for the day. So that means that when we enter a lock, we uh, enter the lock kind of down the bottom of the lock and then we are taken up to the top of the lock and then we carry on our way. But today we are going to reach the summit and that means that we start going down. I'm excited about that. Well, they could just let all the locks open and just like piss us down there. Like. Yeah, exactly. We just like take the current Ooh. down. <laughs> well, we've just come across uh, another first in the Canal de Midi, the automatic lock. So there's a... Uh, there's no lock keeper here. So the uh, raw water stream, we clean this out every morning. This is part of our daily routine. Now everyone can see your big packet of Haribos. Yes, I'm afraid <laughs> Some pretty barges along here. Still got our rain jackets on. I mean, I've got my ocean going. I mean, if it gets any colder, I'm gonna put my ocean going gear on. But yeah, the, the boat's still damp. My shoes are still wet from yesterday when I fell slash stepped into the canal. Did we discuss this on the camera? Nick set me the most impossible task that he's ever set me. He aimed the bow towards like a line of reeds that were taller than I am. And he's like, well, you've got to jump off now. And I said, I can't possibly, I was yelling at him, I can't jump off into this. Like, <laughs> there's no way. And he was like, well, that, you're just going to have to. And there was a patch of shorter grass. That's what, that's what I was aiming for. I uh, aimed for a patch of short grass. The patch of short grass was like a metre wide. And that was it. And that was that was my landing. I've been in a lot of pastry space, but you're, you're, not, you know, you're not there yet. Yeah, well, your aim isn't so great. So, you know, <laughs> anyway. I'm yelling at Nick, I can't get off, I can't get off, and he's like, you have no choice. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this then. So I jumped, and it was one of my finer moments, I'll have you know. It was uh, a very big, graceful and athletic leap. And you made it. And I made it. There you go. I made it. You made it. You made it perfect. It was made an easy it jump. Yeah. Easy jump that you made, you just happened to fall in about 10 seconds later for no reason. Well, what, no, it wasn't for no reason. It was because it was because Nick had like come up against the bank so quickly that the bow of the boat was now like in danger of ramming itself uh, against the bank. What is it? You sound as much, you, you spout as much <laughs> shit as I do. And so I was the only one in any position to save it because Nick, obviously, he, you know, there's only so much you can do from the helm with a bow thruster. I hope I use the bow thruster in case you suck a reed in. Okay. You suck some wood in. Anyway, point being is that I made I made the jump, landed safely with the boat hook, and then I turned to push the boat away. I fell in. And at that point I fell in because it was like a weird like yeah, the the it was obscured by all the reeds that I've already discussed at length. Yes. And I couldn't I couldn't see right. that I was stepping into right. water. So the, the bridge so I fell. The abridged version of this. The, yeah. I asked you to jump one meter onto a patch of grass from from and you did. Yeah. Successfully because it wasn't too difficult. Turn around and fell in. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of more like stepped in. All right. Now T. This 
is quite a, a static job. Yes. You know, I can't really leave the helm at any point during the lock-in. Yeah. So. So you're not. A... I'm not. Yeah, I'm not particularly mobile. Yeah. Which means you're cold. I'm cold. I am cold. Lock. So we are about to do our last upward lock. There's no pedestals at all. There's a, there's a tower that I assume the Ecclesia is sitting in right now. I don't think this is an automatic lock, but we'll soon find out. So that's it, that was the last lock on the Mediterranean side of the summit and we are now five and a half kilometres I think away from the first lock of the downhill leg and that lock was called the Mediterranean lock and the next lock is called the Atlantic lock which is a nice feeling currently at an altitude of 168 meters. We've done 92 miles. Jeez, we've only done 92 miles. Slow going these locks. Not in a mile. Work out some hand signals. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. At five. Towards me. Alright, bath rest support. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yep. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I had to get on. I have to get on. I'm not on. I'm not on. It's actually very low. All right. We need to perfect our technique for me getting back on the boat. I made it back on board. For all of you who were worried about that. Also, check out this view.
but definitely not in wine country anymore. It's just gorgeous hilly countryside and the canal has suddenly just transformed. I think because all these plane trees were not affected by the same disease as in the other part of the canal so they've they've not had to be cut down and it's just gorgeous dodging leaves <laughs> it is just so beautiful how do you feel that went easy oh uh, easier yeah. easier for, for a couple of different reasons firstly there's no current as you go into the lock yeah and when you're approaching, when you're going into the locks, even when you're approaching them with the boat, so from about 200 meters, you're being knocked by the water because those sluices are always partially open. They keep a flow of water yeah, going down yeah, there. Yeah. And sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's quite fierce. So, you, you know, you're literally, the boat, I'm continually having to assess the boat. When you're going into a full lock, there is no movement of water, literally none of any consequence. So the, it's flat calm. You've only got to deal with wind. It doesn't matter really, within reason, how fast the sluice is open in this one, the water just drops. Mm. It doesn't really, well, we've only done one, uh, but that didn't knock the boat at all. No. And thirdly, when you come out of the lock the other side, you've still got no movement of water because everything's closed off behind you. Yeah. All I would say is that, you know, without being all bloody negative about this, if during the descent the nose were to get the, the mast were to get stuck on the lock wall, it would be catastrophic. Absolutely. Uh, well, this is it. But it's easier, but the risk is much higher. Well, there's really with one, with me on this end, and someone else, and you on that end, there is absolutely no reason because there's no. What pushes the mast in? What yeah. pushes the nose in is actually the movement of water. Exactly. It, with no movement of water, that you know. And, and, if, if we had 30 knots in the lock, I probably wouldn't do it. I'd be like, no, it's too much of a risk. Yeah. Look, look at that, the cathedral. Sorry, Nick. I know you're about to complain about how cold you are. Okay, so Nick has fashioned a solution for me to get back onto the boat. Let's see how it works. Foot goes in here, and I climb up. Yeah. So we said that we're going to go through this lock because it's about 4Ks to the next lock and we thought, you know, the locks don't open to 9 o'clock so if we're on this side then we have to wait until 9 o'clock to leave tomorrow morning. But then we came <laughs> up to the lock and we just saw this huge pontoon with electricity uh, pedestals and all this free space and we just thought, oh, that just looks way too inviting to give up. So, here we are. So we're allowed to stay here? Okay, including electricity? Oh, that's good. Call me a tiger. Call me out, don't you know? Lift me up higher. Yeah, it's on. I can tell because it's really cool. The light comes on. Six o'clock. Well, there's a long day. Happy long day. I think that's the longest day yet. Well, Certainly. do you know what? I've had a really pleasant day. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> and I, because, but like, I was cold, but you know, there's no wind. You yeah. know, so it's kind of We haven't been rained on. We haven't been rained on. That was an improvement from yesterday. And the, lock, the locks going downhill are substantially easier than going And uphill. I would say that it's much um, easier. I find it easier going through the automatic locks. Yes. And you just like do everything when you're ready to do it. 
And what the woman said is, I think the reason she says, I'll oh, stay where you want, she said that today everyone's left. So yeah. Saturday is changeover day. Yeah. So yes. it, it just means that when we get to Saturdays, we have to not, we've got to basically move the boat so that we're in a location where we're not in a major conurbation on a Saturday. Yeah, exactly. Have a little sit down? Yeah. Ah. A beer, this beer's in the fridge. Yes. Yes, I would love a beer, thank you. I think this is the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> I do. I just think this is the best thing we've ever done. Uh, it says that I'm getting like covered in air, no, bad idea. Yeah, I'm up and down. Real life versus uh, YouTube. He's doing a great job. Very good jet washer. <laughs> 